Welcome Matterporters, thanks so much for joining me. In this video, we'll cover the 360 Views tool and how to place those, as well as photos, how to save and grab snapshots from your Matterport model. So let's go ahead and dive right in and get started and look at the 360 Views tool. You can see it's right over here. It's got a little 360 icon. And if I click on that, let's just take a quick step back and overview what we have going on in this tool. First of all, the panel comes out with a thumbnail of all of my 360s. In this case, I just have the one of the backyard over here. As with the other tools, I can collapse or expand this panel to see more or less of this window over here. In the top right corner of the view, you can see its number right here. If I had more listed, you would see two, three, and so on. In the bottom right corner, I have the preview button. This allows me to get a full view of this 360 view. So if I tap that, it'll come in here and I can just look all around and see what this 360 view captured. I also have a three dot menu right here that allows me to rename or remove this. It's not going to delete the 360 view from this panel. It'll just remove it from the model. So for example, if I press the number two to see my dollhouse view, you can see my 360 view is placed right here. Also in this pin is the number one so that I can easily reference which 360 view that's uh, referring to. And from the menu here, I can press remove and it'll just remove it from the model. So if you wanna go ahead and place a 360 view in your model, you can just go ahead and grab it and drag it into the model this way. I can see my 360 views either from the dollhouse or the floor plan view. So if you wanna see it from a floor plan perspective, I can just tap the number three, zoom in and move over here. And I can just click and drag this 360 view. Now, when I do that, you'll see this dotted line pointing towards the 3D view that it's going to be connected with. So what that means is if I move this 360 view closer to the home, it'll suddenly snap and be connected to a different 3D scan. If I have it placed over here, it'll snap and connect to this 3D scan that's positioned in the middle of the yard. Now it's really, really important to notice the rotation of your 360 view. It's not gonna be enough to just position them where they were captured. You also wanna make sure that the 360 view is rotated properly. So you can either tap the 360 view and then press the rotate button here, or you can just tap the thumbnail up here to select it. And again, just press the rotate button here. You'll see that the 360 view expands and to get a better image, I can just kind of move it over here, zoom in a little bit, and I can grab it and rotate it. So this is really important to properly rotate it because this is gonna affect the user's experience when they navigate to the 360 view. So this looks right. Now I can just go ahead and click anywhere to make that go away, and I can zoom out again. Now let's go ahead and test this and see what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and zoom in here to my 3D scan and turn around and you can see the portal is right here to my 360 view. If I just click on that, it'll take me into my 360 view and you can see why that rotation was so important because I'm still facing the same direction. I have to turn around in order to see the house as well as get back into the 3D scans from which I came. Now, I just wanted to point out one last thing, and this is really not that critical, but if you just wanna give that extra little something for your visitors, if you'll notice, when I'm in the 3D view or the inside view here, this thumbnail appears when I roll over the portal with my mouse, and it just kinda of gives me a quick preview of the 360 view that I'm gonna enter. Now, in this case, you can see that I'm looking at this play structure, but the thumbnail is of the house behind me. So if you wanna kinda of give your visitors that extra little something with their navigation, make it just a little bit more intuitive, you might wanna make that thumbnail of what they're gonna see when they step in there. So in this case, it might be a thumbnail of the play structure instead of the home behind me. Unfortunately, there's really no way of adjusting this thumbnail after the 360 view has already been captured when you're out there on site. So this is really something that you have to kinda of think ahead and see again, not super critical, but just a nice to have feature. So when you're out there and you position the 360 view and you know roughly which direction they're gonna be coming into that 360 view from, then you can position the camera accordingly to process the thumbnail. 
And what I mean by that is if you're using a Pro 2, for example, the direction the Pro 2 is facing when you first start your rotation, that's going to be most of the thumbnail. So it's going to be a little bit more than just that. So if you roughly point the camera in the direction of the 360 view and, and where you're going to be uh, when facing that 360 view, then you'll know that the thumbnail is going to be pretty close to accurate. So in the same way that you would point the Matterport Pro 2 in the direction of the thumbnail that you want to be associated with your 360 view, you're going to want to do the same thing with a 360 camera. Point the front lens in the direction of the thumbnail that you want associated with your 360 view. With the Ricoh system, that front lens is going to be the lens that is on the opposite side of the shutter button. And on the Insta360 cameras, it's going to be the exact opposite. So their front lens is actually on the same side as the shutter button. So keep that in mind if that is something that you're interested in doing with your 360 views. Now on to the Photos tool. The Photos tool is just below 360 views and you can click on that and you can grab a snapshot of anything that you have in your model. So this includes 360 views as well as 3D scans. Before we jump into how exactly that's done, let's just take a quick look at everything this tool has to offer. Up here at the top, you have your zoom buttons. You can zoom in. This will zoom in by 10% or zoom out by 10% increments. I can also do the same thing with the roller wheel on my mouse, zoom in or zoom out. If I grab the little dot, I'll be able to zoom in or zoom out uh, more granularly so you can see that the percentage is going up just one step at a time. Anytime I want to reset this back to 100%, I simply click this icon right here. Over here in the top right, we have the option of capturing either a 2D image or the full 360 degree pano. Now this is true for every scan position, including 360 views. You're not only limited to downloading a 360 pano from 360 views, you can also download the full 360 degree photosphere from 3D scan positions as well. Over here, I have a settings button that allows me to select whether I want to include things like measurements and labels as part of the image that I download. Now, this is only gonna be true if you choose to download the 2D image. If I'm capturing the full 360 degree sphere, it's not going to include those as part of it. Below that, by default, my photo grid is displayed. I can choose to turn it off, which will hide these lines, but I really like these lines because as I'll show you in a second here, they help me tremendously with lining up my image. I'll just go ahead and click this to escape. At this point, while I'm inside the photos view, I can navigate through without leaving the photos tool and I can just move, drag anywhere I want and just quickly press the camera button down here to grab a snapshot of what I see. I can also press the number two to go and see the dollhouse view if I wanna grab this as my photo. I can grab a snapshot of this or the floor plan view as well. So anything that I see in my viewport here, I can grab as an image that I can use in my marketing campaign. Now, if I'm in the inside view and I wanna just grab a shot of this house, for example, sometimes maybe moving the mouse is not going to be very easy in order to position the image the way I want it. So what I can do is use the left and right arrow buttons as well as the I and K keys on my keyboard to move or pan and tilt the image left and right or up and down. Now you can see based on my image that this can be very confusing because the image is just moving way too fast. So the way you would slow things down in order to more accurately position your image is by using the letter P on your keyboard. So if I press the letter P, You'll notice that up comes this little menu up here and I can take the rotation speed slider and just move that all the way down. Now I'll go ahead and press the letter P again to make that go away. And now when I press the left and right arrow keys as well as the I and K key to move up and down, I can very easily position this exactly the way I want it. I'll just go ahead and press the reset button right here so that I can look at this at 100%. And now I can move to the left, making sure that my photo grid line right here is perfectly aligned with the edge of the wall. I can press the I and K key to move that up and down. And then I can move back in any direction, left and right, knowing that these lines are gonna remain perfectly uh, straight up and down. So once I'm happy with this image, I can just come down here and press the camera icon to grab the snapshot. Now let's go ahead and quickly look at what this would be like if I was to include measurements in my photo. So what I'll do is go ahead and navigate my way to a room 
where I've already captured a measurement. And now all I need to do is go into my settings button right here and choose to include those measurements and labels. Once I've done that, you can see the measurement line appears. What I'm doing now is just moving around to make sure that the straight vertical lines of this image are nicely lined up with the photo grid and I can go ahead and grab the snapshots. A nice little feature as well, after I've captured the snapshot, you'll see there's this view button right here that I can click and quickly see the image that was just captured. Now I can choose to download, delete, or use this as my start location. I can also choose to rename the image right here. I'll just go ahead and close this. Another very interesting thing that you can capture using this photos tool is images of the mesh view as well as the wireframe. So let me show you what that looks like. If I simply press the zero key on the keyboard, you can see that I get this mesh view. And if I press it again, I get the mesh view along with the wireframe view. The wireframe view is not something that you can select to see from the icons down here below. Only the zero key will get you there. If I press it a third time, you'll get the inside view with the high resolution 2D images along with the wireframe view. So this is really a neat way of getting both the idea of this being a 3D model. You can use these in your marketing uh, material while still presenting your clients with a high resolution 2D image. I'll just press it again to make the wireframe go away and we're back to normal. Now, if I wanted to download the full 360 degree pano, I can't do that from the dollhouse or the floor plan view. I have to be on the pano itself. So let me go inside here and now I'll just choose the 360 photo right here. You can see the photo grids go away because in this case, it doesn't matter uh, where I'm looking at. As long as I'm positioned on that 360 view or 3D scan, that's the position that will be captured. Now, if I come down here to capture with the pano option selected, it'll capture the entire 360 sphere. And what I can do is press the view button. I can download it immediately or the other way of downloading and looking at all of the images and panels that I've captured, I can go to the Photos tab. And the way to do that is by getting out of Workshop. So let me go ahead and close that and exit the Workshop. And I go into this tab right here, Photos. Now I can see all of the images that I've captured here. You'll also notice that down here are images that were automatically generated as your model was being processed. The 2D images that are captured automatically or manually by yourself are towards the top and if you scroll down towards the bottom you'll see the 360 panos available down there and i can choose to download any one of the 360 panos by using the arrow key i can also delete it if i don't want it to be part of my model data here as for the 2d images i can choose to select it using the checkbox right here i can select more than one what's going to happen if you choose to download more than one image at a time is that you will be emailed the link to a zip file that will contain everything in one document. So you won't have to download multiple files. If I just want to download everything, I can use this checkbox up here and then hit download, or I can use the checkbox to unselect everything. I can also select any one of these images to see a larger thumbnail. And here too, just as before, I can choose to change the name, erase it, download it, or set it as my start location. I really hope this information was helpful to you and that you'll be able to very easily go into Workshop and take advantage of these tools to customize your model.